in the last few videos of the 91 shop truck, you know, we've done a lot of things to improve the performance of the suspension and the braking uh, and replacing nearly everything. But the one thing we didn't do is improve the handling of the back of the truck with the rear sway bar. Half tons never came with them. So we'll have to buy one or adapt one. Now the blue 95 that you may have seen in some other videos uh, had a Beltec rear bar and it was a very nice bar. It was, did the great job and uh, really made me want to put one on everything. Uh, the problem is the price. If, unless you've got a higher budget, they're not gonna fit. Um, you can get one through uh, Hellwig, Adco, Beltec, and a number of others, but you're gonna spend anywhere from probably 250 to $400 for a good bar. Well, there's a cheaper solution, I think, at least that's the route I'm going because this is a budget build truck, so we gotta have a budget, right? We're gonna adapt a 2001 Suburban rear sway bar to the truck. Now the 2000, 2006 are the same, sevens I believe are pretty similar as well, but I'm gonna stay safe and go 2000 to 2006. Now they are different sizes between the Tahos and Suburbans and maybe even between years. I've got a couple of bars and I measured them. The, sub, the 2001 Suburban bar was 30 millimeters which is about one and three sixteenths inches in diameter. The Tahoe bar was a little bigger. It was 32 millimeters, which is an inch and a quarter. They're hollow, which is pretty cool because for a big bar, they're lightweight. You're gonna to have to use a little fabrication to make it work. Uh, I, can, I found a number of parts online that will make it a little easier to adapt it, something I won't have to make, uh, but, it, but there are parts that you will have to craft together. If you search real hard, there may be somebody that's already done this swap. I've looked everywhere and I haven't seen it. I've seen people who have added the uh, OBS Suburban uh, Tahoe bars to the pickup trucks. And they fit in the, uh, obviously they fit along the rear axle and they attach to the front point of the frame. The 2000 and up Suburbans and Tahoes and trucks, their sway bars attach in the rear. So they mount to the rear axle housing, but attach to the rear of the frame. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Let me show you some of the parts I've already found and there are some that we're gonna to have to fabricate. Here's some parts I was able to purchase that I think will work. The axle U-bolts with washers and nuts, uh, some saddle brackets. They're not perfect for what I wanna use. They will fit the axle, but they are gonna require a little bit of modification and I'll show you what I mean by that. The rear sway bar bushings, um, this is a factory one. It looks pretty sloppy. There's an awful lot of rubber in there. But the problem with the bracket is the holes are a specific distance. Whereas the aftermarket that I got here, I believe this is a Moog, uh, they're slotted, so that gives me some flexibility because I and I'll show you why we need that in a few minutes. I got new dog legs, primarily because the ones I found are worn out uh, that are off of the trucks. Also, the bolt that attaches the dog leg to the frame you need to keep that. I've got them here somewhere, but you need to keep those because they don't come in a kit. You'll get the nut that comes on this uh, this bottom uh, portion, the ball joint, I guess that is. But the upper part, uh, you don't get a bolt with that. So you need to be sure and get a bar uh, with all the components. If you get one from the salvage yard, get one with everything on it. Uh, the old dog leg, everything, the bolts, that way there's that much less you have to come up with to adapt it to your application. Okay, here's where we are. Here's where we are so far. Uh, I've got some 3 16 stock here, just a uh, scrap. And I cut this, uh, cut this piece out of it. It's the, well, it's the width of my small little square that I used. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to... Put this center this over the holes and weld it fits perfectly with the uh, the holes there uh, and that will be my saddle bracket and once this is welded together uh, we should be able to mount one side of the sway bar this is the right hand side mounted here's all the pieces laid out ready to be installed these are what the brackets look like that are gonna hold the, I've been calling them dog legs or dog bones. It's the end links for the sway bar. And it's basically just two pieces of angle iron uh, made into a T and then I just trimmed it up a bit so it looked a little better instead of obviously like angle iron. 
Uh, I beaded it, shot it with a little chassis black. Uh, got some hardware from uh, Ace Hardware. Uh, this is the original bolt that came with the, uh, the end links on the original uh, Suburban. And we got the bar, the saddle bracket, a Moog sway bar. That's a kind of a universal. I like the slotted design. And then here's the saddle bracket we made. Now this is two parts. If you remember, uh, the actual saddle bracket itself was a little little short. It has the correct three inch uh, curvature. Overall, the whole bracket was just a bit short. So I cut a bit of 316 stock and welded it in place, drilled two holes, and shot it with a little black so it'd look pretty. Okay, knowing now that that's what the whole setup looks like, let's install it and make sure everything fits just right. This is the bar installed. One thing I want to show you as well is the angle. There should be a slight forward motion of that end link. On the Tahoe's and Suburbans, it points at about the 1230 position. It's not a lot, but it is enough so that as the rear end moves and the and the end link moves as well, it won't jam up against that angle iron. And that's it for the install. As you can see, it's actually pretty straightforward. The parts aren't hard to make, and if you depending on the scrounging that you do, you may not have to do some of the fabrication that I did. That axle clamp bracket, it had the correct three inch curve to it. If you can find one somewhere else that's a little longer, uh, then you won't have to go to the fabrication I did of cutting out the strip and welding it and all that stuff. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of different ways you can mount that end link to the frame. I was looking for uh, one of the simplest ways without making something fairly simple, very complicated. Uh, it's, this was probably about my 10th design of the bracket to hold that end link in place. And I think it will be uh, very effective and, and it'll blend in being painted black. Nobody's ever going to notice it and it'll look all right as it is. Uh, in fact, it looks good. But there's a lot of ways that you could come up with uh, a small bracket to mount to the frame to hold that end link in place. Remember, it needs to have a small angle to it so that as the rear end goes up, and the sway bar moves, that that bar can move too. If it's if it's all straight in line, it could it could possibly jam up. Not sure. I just tried to copy what the factory had done. If they move, put the end links at a slight angle forward, that's what I did too. Anyway, if you look in the description below, I'll have a list of all the parts I used, the prices. This can be done pretty cheap, and I think you'll get a great performance for the buck. And it sure beats spending $250 to $300 or more for a rear bar when you don't have to. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from it. See you in the next video.